When we add up the first few natural numbers, like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on, the sums that we get are called triangular numbers. This is because these can be arranged into nice equilateral triangles, like this. When you remove the top head of the triangle, you are still left with a sum of consecutive numbers. The numbers that we get now by totaling the bits of paper are called trapezoidal numbers. A number is called polite if it's triangular or trapezoidal. In general, a number is called polite if it can be expressed as a sum of two or more consecutive natural numbers. So let's see which numbers are polite and which ones are going to be on the naughty list. First up, the sum of first n natural numbers is given by the formula n times n plus 1 over 2. Where does this come from? Let's take our equilateral triangle and push it towards the side to make a right angle triangle. We now complete the square by adding the remaining bits of paper on the other side. The total number of bits of paper are n squared as the side length of the square is n. What we can now do is divide the square into two congruent triangles plus a diagonal. The number of bits on the diagonal is n, so the number of bits in the two triangles add up to n squared minus n. As the triangles are the same, they have exactly n squared minus n over two pieces in them. So our original triangle had n squared minus n over two plus n, which is n times n plus one over two pieces. We call this formula T of n, where T stands for took some effort, but we got it. A polite number is a sum of consecutive numbers, say for example, six through 10. Now what we can do is add the sum of numbers 1 through 5 in the front and subtract the same sum from the end like nothing happened. As you can see, this gives the sum of the first 10 natural numbers minus the sum of the first 5. So, every polite number can be written as a difference of two triangular numbers. The little caveat here is that we set t of 0 to be 0. If we expand these out and let them do an algebraic dance, We get that each polite number can be written in this form n minus k times n plus k plus 1 over 2, where both k and n are non negative integers and n is at least 2 more than k. I'll let you chew on why that should be. Notice this thing that n plus k plus 1 is n minus k plus 2k plus 1, right? As 2k plus 1 is always an odd number, one factor in the numerator is always an odd number more than the other. So if one factor is even, the other factor is odd, and vice versa. So, what does this tell you about the product? I'll let you think for a while. Well, the number p must have at least one odd factor, and furthermore, this odd factor cannot be 1, which follows from our previous fact that I asked you to chew on. The numbers that don't have a non-1 odd factor are numbers with all even factors, which are exactly powers of 2. And there you have it. A number is polite if and only if it's not a power of 2. It is actually really fun to use this formula to find the consecutive numbers that make up a polite number. You can do that by looking at the factors and then comparing them with the formula. You're welcome to use this technique to dismantle the number 42 and express it as a sum of consecutive numbers. I will leave the solution for this in the description and let me know in the comments if there are any other numbers that you found that were fun to break apart. Okay, so it's time for some post main video fun facts. These are also called staircase numbers because you can draw them out like this and make a staircase. Fact number two, we can think of polite numbers as being sums of consecutive integers instead of just natural numbers. I'll let you think about this one and put the answer in the description. These numbers can have applications, well, sort of. So if you have n islands and you say that k of these islands will not have any bridges between them, while the rest of them can have at most one between each, then the maximum number of bridges you can make is a polite number. For people with some background in graph theory, this corresponds to the maximizing number of edges for an n-vertex graph with an independent set of size k. 
The really nice thing about this class of numbers is that it relates sums to factors. What happens to the factorization of number when we add numbers together is basically an open problem. In this very special case of adding consecutive numbers, the relationship with factors is quite clear, which I find kind of sweet. Hope you found this interesting, and there's a lot of homework and chewing in this video to keep you busy. See you next time!